Paul and I met in May of 2007. By July of 2007, we knew that we were called to get married. I knew that Paul was the right person for me because of the fact that when I met him, I had such a strong spiritual connection with him. And from the time I was a little girl, my mom had given me a prayer to pray every day. The prayer that I prayed was to the Blessed Mother and asking her to basically send me a St. Joseph. And he had so many of those characteristics. He was just a strong and holy spiritual man. I just knew right away that there was no doubt that he was the man that I was called to marry. One of the things that Paul and I were very excited about as we prepared for marriage and talked about marriage was be able to build up our own little domestic church. Paul and I both came from large families and we wanted to be able to share those things with our own children. And so we started praying to St. Joseph for his intercession that we would be able to find a job that would allow us to start a family and be able to provide. And so we started doing the novena to St. Joseph the Worker and we had already miscarried two babies. And so here we were praying, right as we're praying to St. Joseph, who obviously was the best foster parent there ever could be. When we got the phone call, I remember crying. We were going to be able to take this little boy into our home. And we didn't know how long that would last, how long we would be able to foster him. But here it is, that little boy was not even two years old, and he's 12 years old now, and he's such a gift to my life. And I know that that was a lot of St. Joseph's intercession. Paul worked hard, really, really hard. He was doing anything that he could to make ends meet so that he could do the job that he was called to, which was ministry work, to share Christ with others, just like St. Joseph shared his son with the world. I think Paul definitely wanted to prepare our children so that they could go out into the world to deal with whatever challenges came along in their lives and to be able to bring others to know Christ. Spring of 2014, Paul had had some pain in his chest. By October, he had noticed a lump. Two days before Christmas, he was coughing up blood, and so we made an appointment and got him into the doctors. And they took an x-ray, and they said that his lungs were filled with innumerable tumors, that they couldn't even count them. It had also metastasized to his brain, and then he ended up having two strokes. And the second stroke, he ended up going into the hospital and was in the hospital for two weeks. To see someone who is the strongest person that you know, someone that you've always depended on to physically protect you and your children, to see them suffering like that is really hard. It really hurts. At one point, his little sister was sitting next to me and she said, have you seen what's going on, on online? And then she pulled up the stuff that people had started posting, saying, hashtag pray for Paul. And I couldn't believe it. There were hundreds and hundreds of pictures. And I just felt just this overwhelming strength come upon me. And I knew that it wasn't from me, that it was completely from God, and that it was a gift from all the prayers of so many people. We hoped for a miracle. We prayed for a miracle. But we also knew how bad his diagnosis was, and we knew that there was very little chance that he would be able to survive all the tumors that he had in his body. While we were in the hospital, I walked into the room, and he had been laying in bed, completely out of it when I left. When I came back in the room, he was sitting upright on the bed, completely unrestrained except for the intubation, and he was just smiling. His eyes were just glowing. He was just radiant. He was so joyful. <laughs> and I went over to him and I was holding his hand and I said, this is our miracle, isn't it? And he nodded and he, I could see the smile in his eyes. I was like, this is our miracle. And then the day that he died, 
and I had my arm around him. But I could feel his body lifting up. I could feel his arms raising up. And then he fell back on the bed, and it just, it really did feel like he was just running to our Lord, running to the Blessed Mother, running to our children. I just knew that, that he had had the opportunity to have a, the death that St. Joseph had. A good, holy, happy death surrounded by the ones that he loved, so, surrounded by the angels and the saints and all of the church. After Paul passed, the hashtag Pray for Paul transitioned into Live Like Paul, and people really were able to want to live like Paul did. It's just a really beautiful thing to see all these people from all the world praying and then being inspired to live like him. To live like Paul means to live in a way that brings you closer to Christ.